welcome back. Finding the Fountain of Youth, looking young and fabulous forever is Are you really the name. Me? Well, I am actually not describing you, but it's the name of the game, especially here in Southern California. So we brought back our friend, Dr. Darshan Shah of Next Health. It's nice to have you here. Well, it's so great to be back. Thank well, you for having me. I have a million things to ask you. I'm obsessed with plastic surgery. I'm obsessed with like looking young and fabulous. What is the one thing that you tell your patients that they need to be doing to maintain that youthfulness into their older years so believe it or not it really comes down to three simple things that everyone knows i want to know everyone knows you gotta eat right <laughs> you gotta okay. get some sleep eight hours a night of sleep and you have to make sure you go to the gym at least 30 minutes of exercise every day that has nothing to do with my face dr shah how it has do I everything keep my to do with your fabulous? face <laughs> you no know, seriously like, okay for your face tell me okay moisturize key you know we live in an environment right now where we're always dehydrated no one even takes the time to drink water um, drinking a lot of water moisturizing your skin is huge especially dry skin leads to a lot of the problems that we have um, with our skin secondly protect yourself from the sun yeah. sunblock is very important wear a hat when you're in direct sunlight just doing those two things makes such a huge difference people don't realize it's, it's really, really it's really pretty incredible yep can you see the difference in your patients who have done that and who haven't 1000 percent. i mean you know genetics has a lot to do with it some people just have genetically great skin and they do never get spots they never get wrinkles you but i would say most that. people i, I, I did say. look at you yeah exactly <laughs> look at this guy but um but um it does it does make a big difference even for people with genetically yeah. good skin to moisturize and protect them so you can't i mean you, you, you can't take this for granted you have to be able to continue to to work on that so uh you also mentioned last time you were here about the inside right so uh, of course water is the inside component where our bodies are what 90 percent water exactly uh, i'm not a yes. doctor i wouldn't don't even, <laughs> don't, I don't even pretend to be a good fact to know <laughs> but so so the things we ingest yes uh whether it's alcohol or water or uh, meat or veggies tell me a little bit about what your concept is on that okay so what i tell people about the things that you that you eat is you want to have the least amount of inflammation inside of your body inflammation mm. is a root cause of not just diabetes heart disease and alzheimer's but it's also the root cause of wrinkles and making you look old you know and so reducing systemic inflammation which is inside of your body all the time is a huge factor and the way you reduce inflammation is to stay away from inflammatory foods and how do you know yeah. what foods cause inflammation in your body well we do know that most people are allergic to glutens they're allergic to dairy so if you stay away from those two things it's probably headed down the right track but that not everybody's allergic to gluten and dairy so food sensitivity testing is an easy way to find out what you're sensitive to and we've changed lives with people's food sensitivity tests you do that at next health yes we do how yeah. do you do that? It's a simple blood test. We take your blood and then we tell you 96 of the most common foods, what you're sensitive to and what you should be avoiding. Wow. And not only do you lose weight and you feel better and your joints hurt less, but you look younger pretty much within a few weeks of avoiding these foods that you're really? sensitive to. Really? Huh. Right. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this is totally off the wall, but I have to ask you. <laughs> uh -oh. Christy Brinkley is 65 years old. Mm -hmm. This woman is a freak of nature. She's beautiful. <laughs> she, I don't What is she doing to her face? You Tell know, me. A lot of people wonder what these celebrities are doing. They look so incredible yeah. at su such a young well, age. Jane Fonda as well. Yeah, yeah. Jane right. Fonda. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And Nicole Kidman, like all of them, they're beautiful. But what, what they're doing is basically, it's their life and their career to take care of themselves, right? right? And so they're doing all the things that they're supposed to. I think they also add in a certain degree of hormone optimization as well. I think doing smart hormone optimization for men and for women getting your testosterone and estrogen levels right, it's key, especially as you start getting into your 40s and 50s. What's a good age to start thinking about that if you want to sustain your youthful look? Absolutely. So I would say that um, we are genetically programmed to start declining our testosterone levels, both men and women, believe it or not, at the age of about 35 to 38. So right as your late 30s, early 40s, mm -hmm. get your levels measured and talk to a doctor about what's going to be the optimal, not the normal, the optimal level for you. Oh, interesting. It's interesting right. to me because uh, I, I know that a lot of us go to our doctors only when we're sick, not yeah. when we want to know about how to be healthier. Right. No one goes to the doctor yeah. to be healthier. Right. We right. just go to the doctor when we're sick. Absolutely. And so, uh, 
tell me about that mindset, that process, yeah. because I would never think to go to my doctor and say, so doc, I, you know, I feel great. What can you do to help me be better? Right, right. <laughs> no one it, does that. Right, exactly. And it's not just the public that, do, that doesn't do it. Doctors don't provide that information, right? It's very hard to find a doctor that's going to be testing mm -hmm. your hormone levels and testing your inflammatory markers mm -hmm. when you're not really sick. Right? So you have to proactively go out there and look for a doctor that believes in optimizing your health and keeping you healthy. And you have to ask them, I want my hormone levels checked, I want to get my vitamin D level checked, I want my inflammatory markers checked, and have you explain those mm -hmm. to me. And if they're not, if they're not going to do it, find someone who will. Yeah. That's what we do at Next Health. We do mm -hmm. a proactive set of biomarkers to test for these things and give proactive advice. Um, lastly, I want to yeah. ask, what is your opinion on injectables for versus like a full <laughs> plastic surgery. I am is a there, huge, is there a, yes, yes. I, I definitely have a strong opinion on this me. because I've done facelifts for many, many years. Right. Face A facelift is a huge procedure and most people don't need that procedure anymore. We have lasers, we have safe injectables, we can even inject fat from your own body into your face. We can do a lot of things to make it so that you never need a facelift. Facelifts have Yes. They, that's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> right? The science has advanced exponentially in the last decade to where we can really use non-invasive technology to avoid facelifts. Now, it's not going to work for everybody, of right, course, right, but right. I can tell you the number of faces being done in this country and all over the world has plummeted due to all this technology. Dr. Shah, do me a big favor. Tell Lisa she doesn't need to do anything. She does. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to do all of it tomorrow. Can you schedule me in? Because I need to go. All right, Dr. Shah, thank you for coming oh, in. Great pleasure. to have you here. So great to be here. Thank you.